Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a great day so far. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update and we're going to do quite a lot in this video. Um, we can see that the cryptocurrency market has sold off over the past couple of days. We have been saying to you day in, day out, look, right now we're cautiously optimistic. There's no way you can look at the crypto space and not be optimistic. Um, in regards to what the future looks like and how it's going to involve the crypto space. But on the short term, I would say probably short to midterm, there's a lot of uncertainty within the crypto space and within macroeconomics generally. Uh, and we're going to be talking about some of that in this video. Tomorrow, we've got um, a guest coming on the show who's going to be, you know, who who is in macro markets and has been in them for a long time to kind of try and help make sense of a lot of things coming. Hopefully I can release that on the weekend at some point. And I really want to get far more knowledgeable people than me because my game is crypto. You know, I've been in crypto for five years. I've been looking into markets for a lot longer. Um, however, you know, I really want to get people on the show, just like we had Francis on, which was a very, very... Um, educational video, not just for myself, but I know for many of you guys, I really want to get people on the show that can kind of make sense of a lot of what's going on. Um, but we are going to be talking about macro markets. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin. We've maintained this sort of cautiously optimistic bias. Um, and we did have this MACD bullish cross. Um, and every time you've had one of these, you have had a period of consolidation, which, we, which is important to remember. So things aren't too out of the ordinary. Um, things have changed. We're going to talk about the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory, um, the kind of journey that we're now on, because we've moved away from this. Yes, we are still going to have an element of the halvening affect the Bitcoin price. You know, the Bitcoin supply gets halved every single, uh, or not every single year, sorry, every four years. This, of course, is going to affect the supply. And if the demand keeps increasing, like we know it is, you know, currently there is more Bitcoin being taken off the table daily than is mined. You know, that is a quite a perfect storm that's being brewed. But markets, you know, they're not reflecting that right now. Rather, they're reflecting the kind of macro stance of everything, which is what we've been trying to alert you guys to. Now, one thing that we've said, and we mentioned it, I'm not sure whether we mentioned it in yesterday's video or the, or the video before, so a couple of days ago, we mentioned Bitcoin's correlation with the NASDAQ and your kind of tech stocks more importantly than anything, and why this is a bad thing. Um, because we don't want to see, with what's happening right now in regards to the Federal Reserve, the our market crypto be correlated with the stock market because the Fed are going into a monetary tightening policy. And we've had news of that, which could have been why we actually saw um, a bit of a downturn. We've got the CPI coming out, which is the Consumer Price Index, which has shown record high inflation the past couple of times. Do we get a higher CPI number? Is that what people are worried about? And in turn, does that mean the Fed have to move more aggressively in the kind of tightening that they're looking to impose. I mean, they are going to up interest rates. We have argued that they're not going to get to your real inflationary tackling um, numbers in terms of, you know, up towards 6 7%, because I just don't think that potentially, you know, that the system can handle that. Um, but they are going to have to be seen and certainly do initially these interest rate hikes. And how does that affect markets? Well, if you think about the fact that the Fed upping interest rates um, is really there to squash demand and kind of take the heat from markets. And it's actually designed to, you know, what, what does the Fed upping interest rates do? Well, it makes, it, it should theoretically kill off demand for certain things. The issue you've got with what's happening right now is we're seeing commodities explode. That's really what's driving inflation at the moment. Um, and yet, how are you going to kill off inflation for the likes of food, oil, gas, you know, this sort of stuff. Um, so it, 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 back, this is all linking in, and this absolutely affects the crypto market. And to, to kind of bury your head in the sand right now and only focus on crypto, when there's so much going on elsewhere, and we've confirmed the correlation with our market to other markets, I think is naive. Um, and it, it's kind of willingfully ignorant, in my opinion. Um, but I know this all sounds doom and gloom, and we've been criticized for being, we're not doom and gloom on crypto. I think crypto is the future. I really do. Um, think that. Um, and I think it's going to do very well. And the fact that we had news from the UK talking about how crypto, you know, they want to be the global um, hub for the cryptocurrency space. How the market didn't go to the moon off the back end of that. Also, the US said a similar thing, you know, really reflects just the sentiment at the moment in regards to the tricky environment that we're in is probably the best way to put it.
So short term, I still think we're in for a little bit of turbulence until things get sorted out. There is, of course, opportunity in that. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. Um, of course, we'll look at the Nasdaq. We'll talk about the Fed and what they're doing. You know, Europe stock closed lower amid hawkish Fed comments, new Russia sanctions, stocks 600 down, 1.6%. Um, and of course, the Fed officially plans to shrink the balance sheet by uh, $95 billion a month, meeting minutes in the case. So, you know, the, 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 this is going to be a huge sell pressure. For a long time now, the Fed's had your back in regards to your equity markets. Every time there's been a dip, they've come in and they've sort of saved the day. They're saying they're actually not going to do that now. Um, I think they will have to go back to doing that eventually, but certainly in the midterm or the, or the short term, they've got to be seen to actually fight a runaway inflation. Um, and upping interest rates by 25 basis points is not doing that. Um, and, it, you know... I don't. The other thing I also really think about is I don't think we've seen the worst of inflation. When we look at the Russia situation, I don't think we've seen the worst of it. Certainly not throughout Europe. Um, you know, Germany is heavily dependent on Russia for their gas. Same with Turkey. Same with Italy. You know, this is all going to filter through to markets. So let's get into it. Of course, we have really been into it. So that wasn't really the intro. That was kind of the start of the video, if you will. The markets are, of course, down. Um, and I think this is a reflection of of, of things generally. Um, you know, we did kind of anticipate with this MACD cross, every time you have this, you do get a period of um, consolidation, but ultimately it leads to continuation. Potentially a similar thing taking place today. It might be doing something similar to what took place over here, but on a kind of smaller term. Um, and really, you know, you have the cryptocurrency space getting held under by macro markets right now. Um, but we do expect, you know, upside out of this when we get out of it uh things have really changed you know we, it's been very easy to call markets today because we've been following the four-year cycle theory we've moved off our own fundamentals we've really moved off bitcoin's price action and that causing fomo within the altcoins um and we kind of things changed in 2021 certainly i was expecting a, a more of a blow off than what we got um and we didn't see that and that's kind of changed things up and we, we instead of you know, for the past sort of year or so, we've really just been going sideways in this kind of range-bound trade. This eventually, I think, is going to lead to upside. But we have to get out of where we're at. And we did actually draw... I'll drop down the time frames very quickly for you guys. Um, we had this pattern in play, which was your ascending triangle. We then said yesterday, before we'd actually even broke to the downside, look, you're in danger of forming a descending triangle, and you have indeed broken that. Um, and it, it's what you do now that really matters. You know, do you see a sharp rally back up and you kind of invalidate being back in this kind of range? You know, it, it's just, we got rejected from a very, very significant level around here that's played a, a historic role in Bitcoin's price history uh, and it's actually played as rejection, um, um, uh, sorry, not rejection, uh, resistance and support on, on a number of occasions. So it's very significant um, and we do need to kind of get above it and stay above it. And right now we're not doing that. And I think that has a lot to do with kind of macro markets and how they're weighing down on the cryptocurrency spaces shoulders. Nasdaq's actually up today, which is when we talk about a correlation, we're talking about correlation generally, not on a four hourly to four hourly basis, because of course markets are going to move independently on a small time frame, but, but generally, um, following the same kind of, um, you know, it's very interesting when, if we put Bitcoin back to a weekly, is the Nasdaq actually following Bitcoin? You know, we've seen this EMA, we've seen a rejection, we've had the bullish cross on the MACD, Nasdaq's just kind of getting there today. Is, that, is, it, is this, lots of people calling for this as a dead cat bounce within a um, an equity bear market? I mean, I think there's potential for that. You know, certainly when we talk about the Fed fund rate and how that's going to be going up. I was listening to somebody yesterday who was saying, look, uh, has anybody factored in the fact that the Fed could do an emergency rate hike? So instead of doing them structurally at these meetings, they could just go, okay, well, inflation's got completely out of hand. We're going to have to act more aggressively. How do markets act? I mean, the whole purpose of upping the Fed fund rate is to take the heat out of markets, to take the demand out of it, to, to weaken that demand, and thus bring things back down to a level um, that isn't, you know, seeing your dollar go down by 8%, you know, which, and we know, by the way, CPI is a complete lie. That rhymes. That should be the motto right there. CPI is a complete lie because they take, they they can tinker with those stats. Statistics are great for the people who are in charge of them. Um, and, and inflation, you've only got to look. UK, for example, I own a number of properties. The bills have gone up significantly for them. Yeah. 
Your heating's gone up way more than 8%. I mean, in the UK, I think we're, what, 6 point something percent? Everything's gone up a lot more than 6 point whatever percent. You know, and yet they're going to tell you, okay, well, inflation is... I mean, even food, and we haven't seen the... the, the I, I would argue things are still going to get a lot higher. And it's important for me to mention all of this because it affects the cryptocurrency market. If people are less flush, they're putting less money into crypto. If people are scared, they're taking risk off the table. And what is crypto and how have we seen it act as a very risk on asset, which has been somewhat disappointing for me because this is what Bitcoin was created for. You know, there's value here and yet the value is kind of being ignored and more the kind of macro stance on everything is being accepted and, and, and moving the markets. I think we move away from that and you guys know, like, I know this sounds all, I have to be real with you guys and honest with what I'm seeing. Yeah, and I'm not saying we're going to go, we're going to sell off 50% or we're entering a bear market or anything like that because we've not, that structure hasn't presented itself yet. This is not, and how many how many times during the past two years or, or during this time period have, you, have those people shown up that are going, it's a bear market, it's a bear market, it's a bear market, and they've been proven wrong time and time and time and time again because everybody's looking for this. This structure is not this structure here. It's not the same. It's not. It's nowhere near similar. Your on-chain metrics don't predict that, you know. And we, Bitcoin's, you know, again, we're looking at Bitcoin here. It's really a good way to de to decide the overall market. Bitcoin sold off. Your altcoins are selling off with it. Some more than others. Um, so these are all things you've got to pay attention to. I think the real question that I may be asking myself now is, how am I playing this? What am I doing currently? Well, I still DCA into crypto every single week, but I'm doing it less so than what I was. So. I believe in the crypto space. I think over the long run, we're going to do just fine. I really do believe that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be DCAing into it. I mean, what, what else am I going to do with my money? Leave it in cash? Put it in what I see as an overvalued equity market? Yes, there's an argument, I guess, for the likes of commodities right now um, and certain value stocks that produce commodities. But crypto for me is, is the winner over the long term in terms of an investment. That's what I think. And that's what I'm doing. But I also have more than I previously have money sat in stable coins. I am all in crypto. You can be all in crypto, by the way, and not have to um, eat risk in the sense that you can be in stable coins. You can farm, by the way, on some stable coins, 20% interest a year. You can live off that. If you have 100 grand in stable coins and you put it in one of those protocols, some of them more risky than others, I must admit, I'm not suggesting anybody does this um, because hacks are a real thing and they're becoming more and more frequent. You can gain 20% interest, which is 20 grand a year. You could if you wanted to live off that. Yes, you know, with everything going up, it, it might be a little bit tight, um, depending on what your expenses are. But, you know, the, 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 what I'm trying to say here is, for me, I'm a little bit more cautious than I've previously been. Doesn't mean I don't believe in crypto. Doesn't mean I'm not a huge bull. I'm the biggest bull in the room. It just means that I am looking for opportunity, is a good way to put it. I'm sat ready to pounce when I see something present itself. Now, it may not present itself. For all we know, things could change on a dime um, and we could see the crypto market start to absolutely rocket. That means I'd have to go back in at a higher price than where I currently am. But the risk to reward for right now, I think leans me towards being more cautious. And of course, you know, I keep dollar. There's, there's altcoins out there um, that I buy consistently on a regular basis because I believe in them. Um, you know, Bitcoin, for example. It's been a long time since I've actually, you know, really, really been purchasing Bitcoin, but it's still something that I've gone, well, hang on, why don't I allocate a small, I'm actually more heavy in altcoins than I am Bitcoin, by the way. May upset a few people, um, but I see a bit more growth potential from them. I'm kind of rambling on now, but the, the main takeaway I think is, again, cautiously optimistic. Optimistic on the crypto space, cautious about everything happening right now. And there's a lot going on um, and certainly when the fed and they are you know seeming to be getting they've got to look like they're being serious about things but what does how, what does the economy take i mean we have the yield curve which signals a recession do the fed front run that in the sense that they're the they're the, they're the cursor into it um or not the cursor they're the cause of the recession um it, it's certainly a potential um and we know if they keep up in interest rates well, everybody gets affected that's in debt and a lot of people are in debt um, you know, in fact, most, I would say. Um, 
So it's a very interesting situation that's unfolding. And how does crypto fare in this? Well, we yet to see. You know, the, the, the one one thing that fills me with excitement at the moment is is history is literally being wrote in front of us. You know, it, it, his, history is being written as we speak in terms of crypto and, and, and how it's going to fare during everything. And, and I'm, I am super bullish on the crypto space. I just think right now there's a lot to contend with. I mean, let's look at how gold's doing. Gold is super frustrating. You would expect this to be a runaway market for gold, given everything that's happened. And it really hasn't done that. I mean, it's seen, you know, it's done quite well. And I think it'll actually probably do a little bit better. Um, I think oil's probably going to continue up, potentially, um, because the Fed fund rate isn't going to affect oil, I don't think. People need oil. There's a huge supply crunch right now not with, with a lot of your commodities. Um and that's all going to filter into markets across the board. So that is really all I have for you in this video, guys. Stay optimistic, which is what I am. Um, but just be cautious. You know, if you DCA, you DCA. That's what I do. Um, and of course, I'm keeping a little bit more um, cash on the sidelines for deploying into this market when I see the opportunity that presents itself. And I do think there is going to be opportunity. It might not be. Might, we might see more, more, you know, we might end up going on a runaway. Um, and then I'll have to kind of get in at a higher price. But I think I think on the on the side of caution is where I sit. Um, and we'll see what happens. You know, we've got the, the interest rate. Sorry, not the interest rate, the CPI coming out. The Fed are always trying to get tough. You know, what does that lead to? What happens if we have a, a, a extremely higher CPI, which is what a lot of people are predicting? But then again, we might not. We might have a lower one. And then do markets take a sigh of relief like they did with the 25 base, basis interest rate? Um 25 basis point interest rate hike, which was nothing. You know, it, it's a very interesting time to be alive. On that note, guys, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed this content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. We will keep you up to date daily on markets and how they're doing. And of course, the cryptocurrency market, which is what we love um, to do. So that's all I have for you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Thursdays and I'll catch you all in the next YouTube video. Thanks a lot for watching, ladies and gents.